Every day is Valentine's Day with Jesus. I remember being in the ninth standard and someone asked me, are you dating? And I said, yes. And they said, who? I said, Jesus. <laughs> it's still the same. Are you ever going to find someone who died for your sins and is still alive? Someone who is not validated by your love, but you get your validation from his? That's Jesus, man. He's not going to die without your love, but you're going to die without his. I know that line is freaky. It used to freak me out when I was younger, but bear with me. God showed me exactly what he meant. Our God made us. And we said, no you didn't, I'm my own God, or I'm gonna make a God. And this is what made me. Just imagine you drew something and that drawing starts making your life miserable, tearing your other drawings, saying you don't exist, saying the pencil made it, or some other drawing made it, or making some ash and saying that made it. I'd probably tear it up. I don't need a drawing that makes my life miserable. I made it. I wanted to say something about me to others. Otherwise it can get out of my face. Can you imagine that God who made us put up with heartbreak from us for thousands of years still does? I'm not romanticizing it. Read Jeremiah 3 and a song I wrote on it called Heartbreak of the Lord. What have I done to make you he says, I'm married to you. He has so much for us. I'm gonna get to what it's like to be married to the Lord in a bit. God tried to stop us from sinning for centuries, thousands of years, directly and through his prophets. He said, turn from your sins, turn from your sins. And then he gave us a law to tell us exactly where we're wrong and exactly how we can get right with him. But we kept sinning. So he sent his son. It was the word of God that turned into a human being because anything is possible with God. And this son is Jesus. He didn't sin, but it pleased God to give him our place, to face our punishment for our sin. The death sentence. He went where all the dead go. And in three days, as prophesied, God rose him from the dead, giving us the promise of eternal life if we believe in Jesus. So there's more to this gospel than believe to be saved from death. The point is love. When I know Jesus loves me, it kicks something in the bottom of my heart and I exist truly. Jesus said eternal life is to know God, the Father and his son Jesus. It's not putting a stick on my head saying Christian and I live a normal life like everyone else. And when the time comes to die, I go to heaven. Mm -mm. The kingdom of heaven is here for those who will receive it. And there's more after our bodies die on earth. Our souls won't. There's another reality that is more real than this one. Because that reality was there before this one and will continue to be there after this goes. What is it like to be married to the Lord? I don't need anything else. Everyone just wants to be loved check everyone wants fulfillment in jesus check big check because in jesus you're doing exactly what you were made to do you are being exactly who you were meant to be you're loving others the way you're loved so it's not just a hidden personal relationship between jesus and you you get to show jesus to everybody else that's the assignment because Jesus lives inside a person who keeps Jesus' words. I sit with him daily, in the balcony, in the living room, before I go to bed, when I wake up, when I'm doing my work, when I'm talking to someone else. I'm still talking to him and asking him what to say, because I'm an introvert. And the kind of person that he is, is everything that I admire and I'm not. And it's everything he's making me to be. Valentine's Day with Jesus, if it were to be different from other days, would be special time dedicated to our love. I would like to sit with him and I do this often. Just let him tell me again what I really mean to him. And I tell him what he really means to me. It's like a really nice spiritual date, but without the weirdness. He tells me things like, I've waited for you from the foundation of the world. 
and I have loved you. I knew you were going to sin, but I'm able to see beyond that. I'm able to see what I made and it's underneath all that sin. And I love you for that. I know that's who you are and that's who you can be in me. And I'm so glad you've come to me now. I'm so glad to wash you from that sin. I'm so glad you believe me and you've accepted me and you're following me. Well, there's a long way to go, my child. But I know what you're capable of right now. And that's what I expect of you. I know you'll get there because I'll get you there. I'll finish what I started. I gave you faith. I'll give you everything that you need for this. Just stay with me. You know, God doesn't leave. It's we who leave. And typically, he tries to get us back again and again and again. He keeps calling. Even if he's not physically called, he has called for thousands of years. Human after human after generation after generation. And finally, he says, I guess you've made your choice. Today, nobody here has an excuse to say, I don't know Jesus or I didn't know. Because we have been told this again and again for over 2000 years. He's given prophets. He's given this to tell you again once more. Get with Jesus. Get with God. Get right with Him. The time is now, today, this minute, this second. Fall on your knees and worship Him. Talk to Him. Say you're sorry. He's already forgiven you in Jesus. He just wants you to acknowledge that you've sinned. I'm sorry, God. I believe you. I believe your son. God is like a family. He's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You get married to one, you get married to all of them. He love you to bits. And if there's any bit of you that is lost, you feel, he will find it and put it back. And you will be found by the Lord. He's waiting for you.